thank you all for being here on this fine summer day, uh, Indian summer day, when you could be out enjoying the outside. I appreciate your being here, the uh, nuestros periodistas hispano parlantes y televidentes también ofrezco mis saludos. The population of voting age non citizens in the United States is now, or at least it was in 2006, which is the last year covered <coughs> by my study, just under 20 million. It's probably over 20 million now. About 9% of the national voting age population. Despite naturalizations now running over 700,000 a year, and in the last 12 months, it's a record amount of over a million. This population has tripled since 1980. About 55% of all non-citizens are illegal aliens. The remaining 45% consists of legal resident aliens. I guess you'd think of them as green carters. And long-staying temporary visa holders, which is becoming a very rapidly growing portion of our non-citizen population. We have a national election coming up for which as many as 180 million voters could be registered and 130 million or more, probably well over 130 million votes cast. These are indeed big numbers, but even a seemingly modest turnout of non-citizens who are concentrated in a few states could have disproportionate effects on state, local, and congressional district races and in the winner-take-all electoral college process. The intent of this report the intent of this report is uh, to consider the overall possible size um, of the non-citizen population and its areas of greatest concentration. It is not intended to pinpoint specific precincts or areas of count illegal aliens likely to vote in the 2008 elections, but to offer at least you an, uh, an order of magnitude, an upper and lower bound of what this population is likely to be. The defeat of incumbent Republican Congressman Robert Dornan in California in 1996 is still resounding in the bottled body politic. As, as you may recall, uh, by the alleged votes of up to 4,000 non-citizens, which was the number his attorneys claimed to have proof of, uh, and the evidence that non-citizen voters also decided the race of mayor in Compton, California in the last decade. These two events have highlighted the potential distorting effect of the non-citizen vote on local elections, and in this case of Dornan, of course, that was a national federal election. Most of the evidence so far for voting by non-citizens has been anecdotal and scattered, coming from things like local spot checking of voters against immigration records, usually done on a small scale, voluntary acknowledgement of non-citizenship by persons summoned from the voting rolls for jury duty. A number of jurisdictions have reported that. Investigations by local prosecutors and auditors, usually on a narrow scale. And we have sting operations where activists posing as non-citizens uh, have been accepted for registration. Uh, Nationwide or statewide macro estimates of the non-citizen vote, however, are rare. My effort in the study, as I said earlier, it's been not to pinpoint and specify the sizes, but to give you the order of magnitude. The principal metric in this report is the likely non-citizen presence on registered voter rolls with particular attention to California, home to more than a quarter of all non-citizens, and Texas, Florida, and New York. My main method of this analysis is to identify jurisdictions, usually counties or congressional districts, with large non-citizen populations that show over-registration. That's my term. It's a neologism I came up with. I define over-registration as a disproportionate number of registered voters when compared to the actual population of eligible voters 
for that jurisdiction that can be derived from census data. Whether the percentage of registrants in a jurisdiction is disproportionate is a judgment based on a comparison of the rate in that area with registration rates shown by the state in which the jurisdiction is lodged or with the rates of comparable jurisdictions, other congressional districts that have smaller populations of non-citizens, or with national or local registration rates of particular citizen groups or categories or ethnic groups that can be determined from polling, past polling. The report determines the vote eligible population. That's a term I'll use a lot here. If I lapse into uh, the vernacular and start referring it to the VE, referring to it as the VEP, the term of art, I mean by that the vote eligible population. In each jurisdiction, it examines by drawing on decennial census data, data or 2006 American Community Survey data and subtracting the non-citizen adult population from the overall voting age population. This is the VAP as opposed to the VEP. That is all of the people in that census area of determination that are 18 years or older. Start first by taking and considering the state of Florida for signs of over-registration. For example, in Miami-Dade County in Florida in 2006, 88.4% of the putatively citizen Hispanic population 18 and over, which is only slightly more than half of the county's total Hispanic adult population, was registered to vote. This percentage significantly surpassed the registration rates of other ethnic groups, including the usually much more registration-minded non-Hispanic whites who were below 80%. This rate for Hispanics was also 30 percentage points higher than the rate projected nationally for Hispanic registration by the Pew Hispanic Center. If the legitimate Hispanic community had registered at the rate projected by Pew, it would have produced some 354,000 registered voters rather than the actual 536,000. Based on census data, this report assumes that 80% of those registered will vote in the national elections. 79% actually voted in the 2004 presidential election. Thus, under this rate, the apparent over-registration in Miami-Dade could have produced as many as 146,000 questionable voters in 2006. There are also indications of over-registration in six different congressional high non-citizen districts in Miami-Dade and neighboring Broward and Monroe County, either in 2000 or in 2006. Three districts in 2000 showed registration rates from 11.5 percentage points to 25 percentage points higher than the statewide rate in 2000, and up to 17.6 percent higher in the 2006 registrations. The decline is uh, I found consistent throughout because registrations overall tend to decline significantly in off years and periods between presidential elections by as much as 20 percent in some cases. In three districts, the actual registration rate exceeded 100 percent. That is, it had more registrants than it had eligible voters. In New York State, applying the same test to uh, highly a large foreign-born population congressional districts. It has the third, New York State has the third largest number of non-citizens largely concentrated around New York City. This report looked at six immigrant-heavy congressional districts in that area, three in 2000 and three in 2006, finding that they had registration rates up to 17.7 percent higher than the state average. The report estimates a total of questionable registrations for these congressional districts in those two years of 70,000 in each of those two years. The 16th District of New York in both years showed a registration rate well over 100%, once again, uh, more registrants than eligible voters.